Hey guys, welcome to another brand new episode of Talknology. This is being shot really late at night. It's all it's actually past 12 a.m. So we are going to keep the intro short. This is me, your host Amorto, along with Anantan. And well, today we have lots of great news to discuss, beginning with Apple who are looking to take over the PC world at large with their M1 chip and the new Macs. We also have some uh, phone leaks along with that we have some business economy news related to tech right yeah so lots of great news for you so if you haven't yet subscribed to ftj please do subscribe to the channel hit that bell icon and you know what if you end up liking the video drop a like as well let's get started So the big news for the week is that Apple has finally launched their Apple Silicon. Okay, so they're calling it the M1. I kind of expected it to be called something else, right? Yeah, like I assumed they will add something like Mac or what yeah. do you call it? I, I, I chipset or something. Exactly, I chip. Anyway, jokes about the names of, a name apart, it basically seems like a souped up A14X. So basically what the A14X is, uh, guys, the iPhone 12 series, they came with A14 Bionic. Now this seems to be an eight core uh, version of the same chip. It also comes with eight core GPUs and we are seeing it debut in three brand new devices. So what we are seeing here is, we're seeing it in the MacBook Air, we're seeing it in the Mac Mini and yeah. we're seeing it in the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Yeah. So what do you think of these new chips? Like uh, it's unprecedented, right? Yeah. Something like three uh, devices across three different price levels, uh, basically having the same components, right? Yeah. So basically I don't uh, like take Apple's word for granted because I saw the event fully and yeah. uh, the things that they were comparing the M1 chip with is like, what do you call it? The latest. Windows PC yeah. and like the comparisons very vague. Very, they were very, very, very vague. Like yeah. they said something like best in class. Uh, no, not even best in class actually. Best selling. Best selling in class device. Like, And when compared to the best selling Windows laptop in its class, it's up to three times faster. Okay. Like uh, guys, if you don't know this, uh, the quarter three results for the most sold phones came out and one of them was the Redmi 9A. Yeah. So, like, if some company comes out and says, hey, it's uh, you know, it's better than the one of the best-selling phones of quarter 3 2020, uh, what are we talking yeah. about, the Redmi the, 9A? Yeah, the best-selling uh, laptop is never the best laptop, right? Yeah. Because uh, there is only, uh, like, a niche amount, like, a very small amount of customers they would that would, like, actually prefer a best, like, a higher-end laptop. Yeah. So, a best-selling la Windows laptop is never the best laptop. Exactly. Like, it won't be the most value for money specs-wise. Yeah. And, and the whole event, they kept hearkening a lot on the fact that this time, uh, this chip has 11 times the neural networking capabilities. Now guys, um, personally, I really have no idea what sort of machine learning or neural networking you're gonna be uh, doing on your PC. Like, okay, I can see a use case for it where if you are someone who develops algorithms, if you, uh, you know, maybe you do work in ML and you uh, run demos, but that's a very niche use, use case. Yeah. And they repeated it like every time they yeah. announced the chipset. So it's like the word 5G in the iPhone 12 launch, right? Exactly. So I don't know, guys. Uh, I was really excited for this. Like one of the main reasons for me being excited, that still holds. The, that is the fact that now we have uh, all the iPhone and iPad apps, they would natively be compatible. Yeah. Right. Of but uh, that. Uh, but then we have this thing called the Rosetta 2 uh, API layer and basically, you know, without going into the semantics and the technical terms, it means that uh, most I iPhone and iPad apps should work on Mac right now, as well as the other Windows apps. Uh, no, sorry, not Windows, but Mac apps. But then again, this poses a problem because some like Google with their Gmail and all the G Suite of apps, even Facebook have said that at launch, they would not natively be supporting the uh, ARM Mac. So yeah. right now, I don't know, man. Yeah, uh, and to be fair, the thing that most people misses out on the M1 chip is like it comes with dedicated RAM as yeah. in 
it is not user upgradable right exactly it's so, uh, basically the io bus and everything is integrated to the chip which will indeed save time and energy but still if a user wants to expand the ram yeah, or play it, around with the pc or make it up to there is no there like is way no. you can do it like this is worse than even solder ram right yeah. moving on to the next news OnePlus is planning to launch their OnePlus Nord SE in India and Europe and it is coming with as you guys guessed the 765G and 65W charging. So basically OnePlus is trying to refresh the Nord and make it more popular in India and Europe because in India like the 20 to 30k and 10 to 20k range is like very populated and yeah. it's very popular. So they are uh, trying to fill the void because Nord was not actually a uh, Super duper hit. Yeah, it was, it was a good phone. Uh, yeah. It sold many units, but still it was not like a groundbreaking phone like yeah. the original OnePlus or anything like that. So we are expecting this to launch with the OnePlus 9 and like along with the OnePlus 9. Yeah, so that would be like next year, right? Yeah. Somewhere around March 2021. So yeah. guys, long time away. That's why we don't have much in terms yeah, of leaks. We don't have a, an official confirmation, like no word from OnePlus about this. We just know the code name is EBA and uh, it comes with a 4500 milliampere battery and uh, an AMOLED screen. So first impressions positive, right? First impressions, we don't know enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends upon how much they price it. Because yeah. the Nord came at 25k and uh, to be fair, they are calling it the SE. SE as in budget version if you, if they are following Apple. Yeah. And so it would generally be priced lower than the OnePlus original Nord, right? Yeah. So if it's less than or is it clo if it's close to like the 20k mark, it's like a really good phone. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, the only way I would be excited for a Nord SE after seeing the N10 and N100 is if this is maybe, I don't know, a 5 inch or a 5.2 inch phone. Okay, like a compact phone. Like a, like they would take SE really seriously. Like, okay, we're going to build a really compact phone. It's going to be 1080p. It's going to have a 765G, 4,500 milliampere battery. I guess like dual cameras, triple cameras, whatever. I would really be interested. I mean, I know a lot of people in my family who would be interested. And yeah. I'm pretty sure there's like, you know, tons of people around the world who would really want a yeah. small Android device. Like, uh, to be fair, there are no good compact flagships right now. Yeah. Even the Mini and the SE, even though they are compact, they are very single-handed user friendly huh. still they are like not reliable per se as in the SE they had, have a big battery issue yeah. right both of them are like the SE had a very bad battery problem and the mini is pretty much the same yeah mini we can't vouch for it because we haven't started testing it but yeah. still uh, initial reports say the mini sucks a lot of battery right yeah uh, i mean you could have just stopped at sucks and it would still hold true <laughs> yeah on to the next news so some good news from budget chip manufacturer MediaTek. It seems that they are working on a six nanometer processor. And this is supposedly based on the same architecture as the Samsung Exynos 1080, which incidentally is a five nanometer chip. So what we know about this chip is not a lot because at this time we don't even know the entire code name actually. Yeah. Yeah. But what we do know is it's going to be uh, like a successor to the Dimensity 1000 series. So probably it will come with 5G and it should be, you know, uh, we should see it in phones like the next generation Redmi K30 Ultra, the Realme X7 Pro, because these are the chips that have been mostly using the Dimensity 1000, 1000 plus and those are the chips we haven't seen them much in india though right yeah even like we are speculating that the k30 ultra will like relaunch as the poco f2 but still yeah we don't we really don't have any confirmations whether because uh, generally the indian like uh, demographic they won't prefer a yeah. tech chip there's a like a, a thing in indian yeah. minds that mediatek is still slow and all yeah. that which uh, actually is not that true. Like yeah. the Dimensity 1000 Plus did really, really well. Yeah. It's a Snapdragon 865. And this new chip, it's like the leaked scores. They're apparently close to the 865 and 865 Plus as yeah. well. So again, like for a budget chip, it's doing really, really well. If it can match up to the last gen Snapdragon chips, you so, know, yeah. scores and all that. Coming back to our news, uh, Apple, this time, it's not a great news from them. In fact, it's actually quite bad. They have uh, cited one of their main subsidiaries uh, as, yeah. 
So uh, what have they been actually uh, cited for? So basically uh, what they have been in simpler terms uh, like Pegatron has been using child labor as mm -hmm. in as in they are misusing the student worker program. Yeah. So basically they are make, work making students work like over time yes. uh, to make the production more efficient. So, so guys if you don't know Pegatron is based in Shanghai China yeah. and in there even if you have a student intern in your factory you are not allowed to make them work a overtime as well as overnight and both of these cases have apparently been happening and not just happening like you know for a few months it's apparently been happening for years now yeah. and recently it's been brought to notice by Apple and even more recently like uh, just I think this week yeah. Apple has released a statement saying that uh, from now on Pegatron will not be uh, given any more business till they have done you know corrective measures and make sure that there are no more child yeah. labors being used yeah and the thing is it's not just a bad news for pegatron it's actually a bad news for apple too because pegatron is actually one of apple's biggest suppliers suppliers right. so it, it hurts apple in a way but i think it's a good step forward yeah it's actually a very good step forward like Apple has done many humanitarian things. Like I love the Project Red version yeah. of the iPhone that they do. That's like a really great effort. And uh, we also, you know, really need to take care of our children. They're the future of the nation. Yeah. So not our nation, but, but still. All hey. children are children. Yes, exactly. On to the next news. Continuing on to the Apple news saga. And this time it's a good one because iPhone 11 is the most shipped smartphone globally in quarter three, 2020. But uh, technically, Samsung dominated the top 10, right? Yeah, so these are some very, very surprising results. Like the top two are the iPhone 11 and the iPhone SE. And the thing to note here is iPhone 11 sold 16 million units in quarter three. Exactly. And the iPhone SE, it sold like up to uh, 10 million units in quarter three. So 26 million just yeah. for the top two. But the rest, they were dominated mainly by Samsung. and not the Samsung you think so these are not the S20s or the Note 20s right yeah. so what Samsung's do we have in the top 10 so basically we have the Galaxy A21s on the third position A11 A51 and we have the A31 and Galaxy A01 core that's yeah. the cheapest one of the cheapest Samsung phones like smartphones available right exactly that's running on Android Go so I so, mean, not that surprised to see that here, yeah. but the rest kind of surprising. Yeah, so the top 10 is basically dominated by Samsung and with the top two positions taken by Apple. Redmi and also made a splash yeah, though, right? Yeah, we, we have Redmi. The other three positions were <laughs> taken by Redmi. So we have, the of course, the Redmi Note 9, which is a good phone, and the Redmi 9 and the Redmi 9A. Yeah. So we have Redmi, Samsung, and Apple competing for the best phones on the market, but... Not really, right? Like... Uh, I mean, I can understand Redmi and Samsung competing for the same, uh, you know, price bracket. But the yeah. SE and the iPhone 11, they are like, they have the flagship yeah. portion down pat. That's why, you know, all the bunch, if you take the profits, I think Apple has made more money than Way Xiaomi money. and Samsung compared. Because the, the thing you should notice is like... Uh, with Galaxy, flagships, yeah. there are more margin, right? Yeah. Like you spend a lot on R&D and you come out with something that's exclusive and people pay for that exclusivity. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like people are only willing to pay Apple for that exclusivity. Yeah. Not Samsung, not Xiaomi, not anyone else. Anyway, interesting news, but moving on to the next news in our segment. Next up, we have some bad news for the scammy scammers in Noida because Google Chrome is finally trying to block the JavaScript that redirects web page URL clicks. So basically, Chrome is playing like Google is planning to block all the phishing sites and the pop ups that will say, like, uh, you have a virus installed, call this number for support and all. So I know it doesn't affect Indian so much, we just click away or turn off the computer or the PC, but uh, it mostly affects uh, people like uh, people over 40 in UK and US because they have good internet connection and not so much internet knowledge. So they'll call the number when they hear a sound in their computer or their phone and they'll be like, they'll get scammed. So uh, basically, if you want to check this out a lot more, there, there is a YouTube channel called Jim Browning that you should check out. The guys. They are basically scam baiters who will bait scammers into like sharing their personal information, sometimes yeah. taking control of their computers. Yeah. And he once even actually uh, revealed the real identity of an entire scam group based in yeah. Mumbai, right? 
so sure. that's a cool video if you guys want to check out it's a yep. four part series it's a it's a, it's, it's a really really interesting yeah. so coming back to the news so what google is planning like they have uh, already taken steps on uh, like preventing phishing sites so basically what you can do to Uh, check if a site is good just check on the lock emblem on a website and if there is a lock emblem then it's a it's an it's a legit website yeah. right so uh, apart from this google is planning to take away the phishing sites like exactly she just shut them down out yeah so i think it's a really good move that will save a lot of poor people from their money right exactly talking about more phones in the budget range we have new leaks about a samsung m series phone this one called the m12 that supposedly coming out really soon now the main feature of uh, m12 at least as per the leaks is going to be a huge humongous 7000 mAh battery so that's going to be quite something to look out for yeah. other than that we have the regular amoled screen with a punch hole uh, cut out and well not much else actually yeah. we don't know a lot about the processor right now but uh, from the m series like how they have been pricing the m series and how they have been naming the m series uh, yeah. at least i'm guessing the m12 will be well under 20000 rupees probably yeah. like the 10 to 15000 yeah. right because for the m series that price range has been very successful and popular yeah. and i think the m31 was like one of the most successful samsung phones when they launched right exactly. because every one of our comments in our main channel and is about uh, do customization videos about the m31 and yeah. every comment is related to m31 and like most videos related to the m31 do really well do right? really well exactly so basically i think uh, samsung is going on the right direction but we don't know if it's an exynos chip or a snapdragon chip right we don't know anything about that yet what we do know more about though is that even mediatek is coming out with a new mid range chip so yeah. there's not a budget chip because again this has 5g capabilities yeah. and Uh, along with that they are actually also coming out with uh, two chips that are meant for chromebooks yeah that's quite interesting right like yeah so mediatek has also always been like the budget option for chips and, yes. and chrome chromebook generally does not uh, demand so much power right yeah it's, it's just, just browsing the web but then uh, i think one of the great things about having a uh, you know a arm processor inside a chromebook is that you get instant connectivity like yeah. you don't like uh, with all our smartphones we just hit a button and it we expect it to immediately light up right yeah. but we never expect that even with the fastest laptops yeah. we expect them to have a wait time but yeah. with this this is instantaneous so that's nice yeah it will be fun to look at right yeah swing up fun to look at we have the last news of the day and this is a trip down memory lane yeah it's a nostalgic one that's why we are covering it so nokia is launching their n95 smartphone not the old one they are just refreshing as an android smartphone so yeah what's special about it so uh, basically it doesn't have much like you know this was a prototype yeah. and what we see here is that it can slide out uh to so show basically it comes out with the slide out speaker and a kick stand like the yeah. old Nokia one and i don't like generally like rationally thinking it's not a great idea to have a android smartphone with the moving parts right yeah so i uh, it's uh, it does bring out some nostalgia like the mm-hmm. razer did with the razer yeah. but uh, i don't think it's going to be that successful I mean it all depends on maybe uh, like how good that speaker is right yeah. like if it's a really really good speaker I can see it becoming popular because for a lot of people uh, the phone is the only source of entertainment right yeah. so maybe with that we come to the end of this episode of technology thanks a lot for being here with us and well this is goodbye from Amurto this is Anandan saying goodbye once more <laughs> Have a nice one guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.